Hello, seniors. I'm glad that you are able to view this instructional video in that probes you are interested to learn research. May this video provide you with memorable learning as you go through practical research when. Happy learning! Our lesson today is data collection. At the end of this module, you are expected to discuss the concept of research data, identify the steps in data collection of qualitative research, and write data collection plan for a qualitative research. After selecting the participants, the next step of the researcher is to gather the information needed for the study. But how would you know if the information you have gathered will suffice your research objective? Before we answer this question, let us first understand the concept of research data. What is research data? Research data refers to the kinds of information researchers obtain from the subjects or respondents of their research. Research data takes many different forms. It may be intangible as demographic information such as age, gender, ethnicity, and religion, or an object as in physical research materials such as samples of rocks, plants, or insects. Here are some examples of the formats that data can take. Documents such as text or MS Word, spreadsheets, lab notebooks, field notebooks, diaries, questionnaires, transcripts, surveys, code books, experimental data, test responses, artifacts, specimens, physical samples, models, algorithms, scripts, content analysis, focus group recordings, and interview notes. Generally, data may be classified into four main types, observational, experimental data, simulation, and derived or compiled data. Observational data are data captured through observation of a behavior or activity. It is collected using methods such as human observation, open-ended surveys, or the use of an instrument or sensor to monitor and record information. Next is the experimental data. Data collected through active intervention by the researcher to produce and measure change or to create difference when a variable is altered. Experimental data typically allows the researcher to determine a causal relationship and is typically projectable to a larger population. Moving on, let's have the simulation data. Data generated by imitating the operation of a real-world process or system over time. This method is used to try to determine what would or could happen under certain conditions. Number four is to derive or compile data. It involves using existing data points, often from different data sources, to create new data through some sort of transformation, such as an arithmetic formula or aggregation. However, it is important to note that in qualitative research, you will be generating data that is primarily in the form of words, not numbers. Qualitative data describes qualities or characteristics which may be difficult to precisely measure and analyze. Data collection is one of the most important stages of your research because the quality of the data you collect will shape or limit the value and credibility of your findings. Thus, you must formulate a plan before conducting the data collection. Here are the steps in creating a data collection plan. Step 1 is to identify the questions that you want to answer. A well-thought-out research question identifies what you are going to explore the specific data you need. Our data must be relevant to the study. Step 2 Determine the kind of data that is available. 
As a researcher, you must find out what kind of data is available to collect. You must list all the data points that are needed to answer the questions the research or the research is centered on. You may refer to the types of research data in the earlier discussion. Step 3 is to determine how much data is needed. We want to get enough data so that so what we can see patterns and trends. For each data element on the list, write down how much data is needed. You may refer to the effective sample size discussed in the previous lessons. Step 4. Determine how to measure the data. There are four types of measurement scales. One is the nominal scale, where the researchers simply assign numbers to different categories in order to show differences. For example, a researcher concerned with the variable of gender might group data into two categories, male and female, and assign the number 1 to females and the number 2 to males. Second type is the ordinal scale, one in which data may be ordered in some way, high to low or least to most. Third, interval scales possesses all the characteristics of an ordinal scale with one additional feature. The distances between the points on the scale are equal. Ratio scales. This is an interval scale that does possess an actual a true zero point. Let's move on to step 5. Decide who is going to collect the data. This refers to the administration of the data collection. As a researcher, you can get the information yourself with little or no involvement of other people, or directly from the subjects of the study, or from others frequently referred to as informants who are knowledgeable about the subjects. Step 6 is to determine where the data will be collected from. There are three broad strategies for obtaining data, collecting the data yourself, using existing data which may come from government data, organization data, data repositories, or existing research studies, or combining these strategies together. Step 7 is to decide whether to measure a sample or the whole population. As we have learned from previous lesson, oftentimes it is impractical to measure an entire population of data. In such a case, we then take a sample of data using different sampling techniques. But in rare situations, you may choose to measure the entire population if reasonable. Step 8 is to determine in what format the data will be displayed. The last step is to decide the format of displaying the data. We can display data in many ways such as charts and diagrams. Here is an example of a simple data collection plan. While your data collection plan template may vary slightly, it will likely contain many of the components found in this example. The research title for this example is The Effect of Distance Learning Modality to Senior High School Students' Overall School Performance. So the questions to be answered are what are the students' reactions to distance learning materials? It will gather observational data for the sample size of 500 students. The measurement would be ordinal scale, the person assigned researcher and or informant, owned source, for the sampling, quota is 200, uh, the sampling method would be quota, 250 per grade level or 250 per gender. And the format for the first question to be answered is questionnaire or survey. The second question to be answered is how well do the students perform during the simulation classes? Obviously, it will harvest simulation data, interval measurement from informant, the source would be organization, and format would be the test results. Last 
question to be answered is what are the teachers evaluation for their students that will yield observational data ordinal scale from the researcher or from the informant own source and for the format questionnaires and survey That's the end of our lesson today. It's been my pleasure teaching you one of the amazing topics of Practical Research 1, and I really hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thank you, and may God bless us all. Let's meet again in our next video.